Hi. Mm, love security. So, uh, but I do not know why I love the legal domain quite so much, and, and uh, apparently, particularly the uh, intellectual property law aspect. I'm not a lawyer. I don't even play one on TV. Uh, but, uh, yeah, this stuff is fun. Anyway, uh, on to uh, the rest of uh, intellectual property. Um, now, copyright and patent um, are uh, sort of identifiable concepts and ideas. Um, so they are areas where um, the law, even though you know different jurisdictions are going to have uh, different laws in regard to them, but um, the uh, the principles are are going to be fairly common. Um, when we get into trademark and, and eventually trade secret, um, we get into fuzzier areas. Um, the trademark is any design, shape, um, font, uh, color, um, sound, uh, phrasing sometimes um, that uniquely identifies the the company and the product um, particularly in branding now trademarks originally of course were the the maker's mark the the signature in the days when basically anybody who made anything they were they were artisans, they were craftsmen, um, and so um, the quality of the product was going to depend on the skill of the craftsman making it. And so the um, identification of the object with the maker um, was important, and uh, somebody claiming to have made an object made by somebody else, of course, could uh, be sort of siphoning off business uh, on the, the basis of this other person's skill. Um, the, uh, yeah, and, and sort of conversely, you know, if, if somebody says, well, you know, this was made by so-and-so and, and, you know, it wasn't, you made it and you didn't make it particularly well, then again, you know, that can affect that person's uh, ability to to make a living, um, as well as the sort of moral rights that are associated with copyright and, and that sort of thing. But, um, yeah, we're, we're identifying originally, um, you know, it's a signature. Um, now, in artwork, you know, painters sign their paintings. Uh, sculptors may have a bit more difficulty signing something. So, you know, they're going to probably have something closer to a maker's mark that, uh, you know, they put on a statue or something like that that indicates that it's theirs. Um, the Then, as time goes on, we get into corporate branding and the identification of a a product with not an individual but a company um, and I believe actually it was uh, Quaker Oats was the first brand for something which previously was just a commodity you know rolled oats um, you know big deal uh, everybody makes them everybody makes them the same way well you know they're trying to push it that theirs you know they have a higher quality and maybe they do um, uh, so, you know, this is now the company that is branding and, and creating trademarks and um, by extension from the protection of the, uh, the maker's signature from artisan days, uh, we now have issues of uh, uh, protecting the, uh, the company's branding. Uh, their name and image they put on their packaging. 
Um, I, when I first got into security, I was dealing a lot with uh, what was originally Digital Equipment Corporation. Uh, was uh, around the time that I was uh, getting involved, um, rebranding to digital and changing their logo, their font, their uh, the background color on their corporate logo. And I believe that that is still registered as Digital Purple, even though the company uh, doesn't exactly exist anymore. Um, the, um, so these, these identifications, and, and of course, you know, you have the, the brand itself um, being, uh, you know, having, having a value, and therefore, you know, the, the protection of the brand is important. Um, and so you have the, the value of corporate brands and corporate logos. Um, currently, of course, one of the big ones is, is McDonald's, uh, but, um, uh, I don't know, 20, 25 years ago, um, the most valuable brand in the world was uh, Coca-Cola. It was the most identifiable brand in the world, and that uh, identification was... Um, you know, had a had a value to it. As a matter of fact, that value at that time actually exceeded the value of the company itself. Uh, so that's a an, an interesting uh, take on finances and business finance and so forth. Um, but um, you know, the the different types of things that you can use. For a brand, uh, Coca-Cola, of course, they have their 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 logo. They have the the shape of the bottle, um, and uh, you know various things. The uh, the red and white uh, color scheme um, that they use, um, that particular hue of red. Uh, so you know we've got different things to be. Um, protected and uh, this is you know definitely into uh, civil lawsuits if, if somebody is uh, presenting uh, you know fraudulent goods under uh, that same trademark um, and the uh, so, you know, we, we're going to have to do our own uh, protection if somebody is doing it. But it comes out into things like uh, fraud because we have uh, people selling, you know, fraudulent Rolex watches and uh, various other uh, uh, products. Um, you know, Gucci uh, handbags, uh, you know, whatever, whatever brands get a value, somebody tries to to sell a knockoff. Um, so, uh, it, you know, we, we do have brands um, in, uh, uh, you know, our IT companies and that sort of thing. So that may uh, be something that you need to be aware of and, and protect. Um, but there are other aspects too. And of course, uh, having in the proper color scheme and believe me having been involved with a company that dealt with uh, uh, printing um, very high resolution images color can be a real bear trying to uh, make sure that that does in fact match in all situations um, but you know shapes logos fonts um, all of these things may be things that uh, need to be protected uh, and so that's uh, one of the areas of intellectual property and uh, we get into I guess our last one uh, trade secret next time <laughs>